My name is Jan Jones, and I am one part of the awesome team at Legendary Comics. And welcome to the Legendary Comics MonsterVerse Publishing Panel for WonderCon 2020. We are so sorry we can't be with you to share this in person, but we are incredibly thankful for the opportunity to connect with you today. Along with Inside Editions, we have a full slate of projects to support Legendary Entertainment and Warner Brothers' upcoming film, Godzilla vs. Kong, and we can't wait to share it with you. Joining us today are writers, artists, and editors from around the globe. Please note that the titles and art that we are sharing today aren't final, but we really wanted to give you a behind the scenes look at what we're working on. So let's get started. Hello, and welcome to the Godzilla WonderCon pre-recorded panel. Today, we are going to be talking about the Godzilla prequel graphic novel. Joining us, we have Robert Napton, SVP of Legendary Comics Publishing, uh, amazing writer, Greg Keyes, and fantastic artist and uh, Godzilla alum, Drew Johnson. Hello. Hello. Hey. Well, um, really excited to actually be bringing together Greg and Drew um, virtually for the first time um, for this panel. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, just to kind of set the table a little bit about the project, it's it is a prequel graphic novel to the upcoming movie Godzilla um, vs. Kong. Uh, we're going to reveal a little bit about um, the process and, and what we're up to with this particular uh, graphic novel. Uh, I guess I'll start with, with Greg. You um, come to this having written some novelizations for us, uh, meaning legendary, on the Godzilla franchise. So if you could uh, introduce yourself and talk a little about your previous work, and then we'll talk about the new project. Uh, well, I've you know, done a fair number of books, um, and uh, I did the, uh, the novelization of um, Godzilla King of the Monsters, which was a, a lot of fun, actually, um, because I got to do a lot with it, which you, you don't always get to do that with novelizations. Sometimes you just have to go completely by the numbers. Uh, other than that, I've worked, you know, in the Star Wars universe and uh, Babylon 5 and so forth and written a number of original books as well. Very cool. Um, and Drew, you're no stranger to many comics, including Godzilla. You illustrated uh, the Godzilla King of the Monsters tie-in, the graphic novel yeah. Godzilla Aftershock. So we're bringing mm -hmm. you both back and pairing you together for the first time, which is cool. Yeah, I had a great time uh, uh, working on Aftershock. Um, it was uh, it was a fantastic experience, and I'm really excited to be uh, back with uh, the whole team and and to be working with Greg. And the script is awesome and fun to work on. I'm having a blast. Um, Drew, I know um, you love drawing all kinds of things, but drawing monsters is something I think you've gotten an opportunity to do on Aftershock and now in a major way without giving too much away on this story that Greg has come up with. Um, that must be fun. Anything you want to talk about in terms of doing that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've really gotten to exercise the monster muscles in this with uh, the design work that we've gone through um, and, and starting to work through the book. Uh, the thing I'm really having fun with is I didn't increase of the actions of Godzilla versus uh, uh, being with Godzilla from Godzilla's point of view in this one. Um, and so getting to show character in Godzilla, you know, there's actually like much more acting on the part of Godzilla in this. Um, and and it's, uh, it's put me inside Godzilla's head, like, like Greg was saying. Uh, for me, you know, I'm, I'm closer to Godzilla than I've ever been before. <laughs> and, it, and it's fun. I mean, it's, it's interesting to see how Godzilla would react when attacked. Um, and it's interesting to see Godzilla at peace. Um, you know, it, it's intriguing because I don't think we see uh, monster stories very often, if ever, uh, where we're, you know, in those kind of intimate moments of the, the monsters being, you know? Hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think you captured what we're trying to do with this story really well. What's what's so far your favorite part of writing and and or drawing in Drew's case Godzilla? Uh, Greg, um, do you want to start with that one? Just like what's what's the most fun or what do you enjoy the most about it? Well, you know, like we've been talking about, I've really enjoyed kind of getting into his head. And you know, my background is is an anthropologist actually, 
um, that's what my degrees are in. And, um, and in specifically in the mythology of, of, of the anthropology of mythology, belief, religion. And um, I, I really found an opportunity to kind of reach deep into some of this really uh, mythic substrata, I think, uh, to imagine Godzilla. And at the same time, I've been <laughs> observing the lizards in my yard and the territories <laughs> that they patrol. And uh, I, I sit outside and watch all this. And it's, uh, I have to say, it was actually kind of inspirational just to kind of watch what they, I've watched two of them have this sort of, um, they basically were threatening each other and almost came to a, to a fight, which is, was very interesting to watch how they, one was an old, old lizard that was probably on his last legs and the other was kind of a young up and comer. The old one won that fight, but then I never saw him again. Um, but yeah, it's just, just trying to, to get inside this, this gigantic thing, uh, this ancient thing and, um, and imagine what it would be like. That's awesome. That's really cool. Not only your background and how you're bringing that into your writing, but that your backyard observations are very true to <laughs> what of course in the backyard. I'm the Titan, right? But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, Drew, same question for you. I mean, I know you, you obviously are well known for uh, Wonder Woman and some amazing characters you've drawn over your long career. And I think this was a, not a shift, but just something different. Maybe not people necessarily knew you for, you know, and you certainly know how to draw monsters. But what's the uh, what's the funnest part of it for you? Um, it's I mean, it's interesting because uh, uh, you know, I've drawn some, you know, iconic characters, uh, at the other companies before. And it, it's interesting because Godzilla is still one of those iconic characters. I don't feel like I've shifted gears that much because it's still the same kind of situation. The, the bigger than life, in this case, way bigger than life, uh, character. Um, so it, it, it's an interesting, uh, uh take on a, on a, on a giant, uh, uh, heroic figure, with a different set of morals or, or lack thereof, I'm not sure. I mean, I guess Godzilla does have a sense of morals. Um, it's funny, I was, I was looking through King of the Monsters yesterday for some reference for a scene. And, you know, as watching Godzilla in that movie, you do see uh, a protective side, the heroic side come out um, that I think, you know, like it's, it's more pronounced than I think I've seen it in other monster movies. Um, and, and even in other Godzilla movies where Godzilla seems to be like the, you know, the protector of the planet. And, and I'm digging that we can, you know, kind of get into that a little bit more in this book and, and, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. No, That's a really interesting, um, perspective. Greg, um, what do you think? Does Godzilla have a code? I mean, yeah, I think he does. <laughs> I, 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 He's, I don't know if code's the right word. I'm trying, I'm grappling with what to call it because I don't have to call it anything when I'm writing from his point of view. Um, he's got a Is set like of, he, he's definitely got a set of priorities. How about that? Um, and um, those priorities drive him at almost an instinctual level, I think. That's my feeling about that's, it. I've the exact same thing. <clears throat> yeah, it's like an instinctual uh, value system. <laughs> You know, like when he when he comes upon uh, uh, a, a monster or two monsters and he has to defend one and get rid of the other, you know, he knows which ones or which one to pick that's going to be better for him instinctually. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, OK, well, we're going to uh, we're going to wrap up just really quick Going to throw a fun question at you guys. Obviously, you can't answer Godzilla with this question. What's your other favorite monster versus monster besides Godzilla? Yeah. Uh, oh, you want to go, Greg? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I would like to say it's one of the ones I created uh, or, or was able to kind of bring to life. But that would be a little disingenuous because I, ha I actually have to say it's Kong. Kong is I, Kong and I have been in together for a really long time um, uh, since I was a, a young boy. And I saw the original and not obviously when it came out, but uh, it's, it's, it, uh, Kong has always fascinated me. So I, I would have to go with Kong. I, I'm I'm kind of tied right now between um, I really love Mothra and King of the Monsters. Um, I, that's my favorite interpretation of that monster so far. I just thought she was super cool. 
Um, and, and I also really, I, maybe it's just because I enjoy drawing her as Sila, um, just because she's so much fun to draw. She's so weird looking and, and just so creepy on so many levels. And I, you know, I mean, I always add in how much fun something is to draw in terms of calling it my favorite. <laughs> Actually, I can't wait to see that. Um, so. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's going to be a fun scene to work on. Well, awesome, guys. I uh, really appreciate you taking some time with us to talk about our upcoming Godzilla prequel graphic novel that will tie into Godzilla versus Kong sometime in the fall, Q4 of, uh, of 2020, we hope. So uh, thanks, and we'll be talking to you again soon. All right. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the uh, MonsterVerse Legendary Comics Publishing Panel for 2020. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about the Kong prequel graphic novel. Joining us today is Robert Napton, SVP of Legendary Comics, Nikita Kanakante, the editor, uh, Zid, who is a legendary fan favorite artist of ours, and welcoming also Maria Nello, the uh, rock star writer. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Well, just to set the table on this project, um, you know, we uh, have done a series of, of books and graphic novels uh, tied to our MonsterVerse movies. And um, we kind of hand off to Nikita as to how she found Marie and uh, everyone can sort of talk about their backgrounds a little. Yeah, thanks, Robert. Um, so Marie, actually, um, she, wrote a comic in Shout Out Anthology. Yeah, by Toronto Comics. Yes, and um, that's how I found her. And yeah, Marie, do you wanna talk a bit about your background? And Yeah, um, it's very eclectic. Uh, I am actually originally, um, I went to school for music. I'm an opera singer, actor. Um, you know, I also have branched out into musical theater and cabaret. Um, and I started writing comics in earnest um, probably about five or six years ago. Like I had originally um, started out doing book reviews of comics and web comics online that um, I just, because I enjoyed them and I enjoyed doing them and I started getting more and more involved in the comics community. Um, now I'm really, really stoked to be working on this. It's a really exciting project. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And um, one of the reasons that we wanted a female writer on this is because we were bringing voice, bringing life to this um, really cool new female pilot character. Mm -hmm. um, Marie, do you want to talk a bit about bringing her to life and yeah. what she's like? Yeah, absolutely. I love her. Um, no, this was a really exciting opportunity to write a, um, a woman who is struggling with a lot of uh, baggage, um, a character who is both a very fierce pilot and someone who is also very vulnerable. Um, she's a fighter pilot and that was a really cool experience to be able to do the research into that and also consider how a fighter pilot sort of compares to these larger than life creatures and how that would um, get involved in giant monster fights. Um, yeah, she's, she's definitely a fighter, which has been fun to see come to life on the page. Um, so Zid, I want to kind of talk a little bit about, uh, there's a new creature that the mythology team um, here at Legendary helped devise uh, called Kamazats, and I was wondering if you could talk a little about that. The challenge was to create something that does not really echo or reflect anything that has been done before uh, in terms of uh, giant monsters. Because I believe uh, there, there are many iterations of bad monsters that came up uh, in the, uh, not just the monsters, but in, in, in many other uh, Kong uh, sort of uh, adaptations, animations, and even, even comics. We needed to do something that, that uh, evokes uh, evil. Um, and uh, and I, I really hope uh, the, the visuals will do the talking mostly, especially in the comics, yeah. We showed uh, the image of Kamazots at a panel uh, last year and the audience went nuts and they so loved it. And watching the excitement on people's faces when that slide showed up and we never, 
formally released the image, but it, people made YouTube videos talking about it and showcasing a screenshot of your art because they were so excited. So we are so excited to be able to showcase it as it was meant to be seen. So thank you. It's beautiful. <laughs> They, they were fan art surfacing even better than what I did. They are they're, they're <laughs> making speedy versions of it quite close. I mean, we, we only, uh, I think you guys just released just one image. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to see a bunch of fan arts in 3D, in, in 2D, in, in kind of paper drawings. Uh, some of them are quite close. Uh, it's crazy how this has gotten, where this has gotten to where it is now. <laughs> So the legendary mythology team always helps us shape these uh, prequel and sequel graphic novels, especially for the MonsterVerse. And one of the many creatures they came up with was Kamazot. So could you talk a little about these story challenges? Well, like Kamazots was interesting because um, when you think about the really famous monsters of this franchise and like, you know, even going back to the, you know, the original, um, like Toho monsters and everything, they all have these very stark, like kind of silhouettes and these really clear cut, um, like concepts behind them. So, you know, like Rodan is all fire and Ghidorah is like electricity. And so then this thing is darkness. And that was a really cool concept to like play with. And from a storytelling perspective too, like, you know, he's sort of this embodiment of nightmares. And so, how do you how do you approach that from a visual standpoint? How do you approach that from a character standpoint with the uh, the human characters who may interact with him, or like how does Kong interact with him? How does he carry himself? Um, what kind of feelings does he instill? And that was a really cool uh, thing to kind of let it uh, bubble up to the surface in the writing. So that was really cool. Every artist um, who is a fan of the genre. Um, the, the, the favorite part of, is making the giant monsters come alive and believable. It's comics, but you know, um, the way I approach it is there's the, 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 the suspension of disbelief needs to, to be grounded to make it look the scale of it and how the character reacts. I mean, it's easy to just draw giant monsters and, and, and fighter jets and uh, the human characters, but to make it look as if they're all on the same plane it's uh, it's uh, the most fun I can have, uh, like playing miniature toys, you know, but this is another version of it. Uh, my, the, the biggest takeaway for me is being able to draw Kong and translating his emotion somewhat. Um, because when I see the movies, uh, you get to see his, he doesn't really talk. I mean, he, his actions speak louder than words. Um, um, final question for both Sid and Marie. What is your favorite monster versus monster? Other than Kong. Yeah, Sid? Oh, oh, sure. I was going to say, uh, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to let Marie uh, say first, but oh, sure. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but before the monster verse came to be, uh, I did a test for Godzilla Awakening. Uh, it didn't work out. Uh, and it crushed me as I as I grew up being exposed to more Gojira than any other King Kong material uh, on our shores. So naturally, my favorite had been Godzilla. I mean, now Godzilla is the king of the monsters, but uh, Kong. I feel more empathetic and I relate to his story more. So I'm rooting for the Mega Planet now more than ever. So hashtag Team Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's funny because like, yeah, I was, I was originally, I was thinking like, you know, oh, it's gotta be Kong because we, you know, this, we're doing this book. But when I think about like the, the monster that I think like, you know, if I ever got to do a, another book like this, I'd love to do something with Rodan. Um, and ex and specifically like, I love the monster verse take on Rodan that he is literally like molten lava, that he is actively on fire. Um, also the, you know, the, you know, I, I was a kid in the nineties. I grew up, uh, watching Power Rangers and my favorite was the pink ranger with the pterodactyl ship. And so I always loved like flying dinosaur monsters. 
and like, yeah, I, um, I definitely think when I look at the MonsterVerse designs and I look at the monsters that I would like to spend more time with, Rodan is definitely one of them, just because I think that that take on him, that he is this like elemental creature that lives in volcanoes is the coolest thing. So that's my answer. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for everybody for staying up late or waking up early to be with us today. We are so appreciative. We cannot wait to see these books and uh, have a good night. You too. Right. Thank you. Hello and welcome to our uh, segment on the Kong picture book. Uh, this is a new kind of category for Legendary Comics, uh, our first picture book, and I am lucky enough to be the editor. Uh, normally my day-to-day -day routine does not allow me to edit books, but um, I get to do the things that I feel really passionate about. And I am so honored today to be talking to these two amazing women um, who will be bringing the story to you. Uh, we have Nidhi Chinani. She is going to be the fabulous artist. Uh, Nidhi is an award-winning, best-selling um, writer, author. Her uh, debut graphic novel, Pashmina, has been picked up by Netflix for an animated feature, and we are so excited. Uh, that book made my face leak. It was amazing. <laughs> um, and she also just did her first picture book work last year with I Am Fierce. Um, and then also we have Kiki Thorpe joining us. Kiki is a New York Times bestselling writer. Um, she wrote My Name is Doug, which is all about our favorite dog from the movie Up. Um, and she's the New York Times bestselling author of The Never Girls Adventures for Disney. Um, so we are so excited to have them here today. Um, and we're in really early stages of this project. I mean, the ink is, is fairly dry on both of these contracts. So we don't have any art to show you today, but we just wanted to meet, uh, introduce you to the team on the book and uh, you know, just get their thoughts. Um, so a little, I'd love to like, just hear just a little bit about yourselves and both of you. Um, yeah, I am super excited to be working on this project. When Jan told me about uh, the opportunity to write a picture book for Kong, I was like, that's just a dream project. It's so cool. I mean, to take this amazing, iconic character and do something new and really explore a side of him that I don't think we always see in the films. So um, I'm really thrilled to be working on this. Yeah, and I I was super excited because I get I get a lot of requests to illustrate picture books, and what I look for is really a challenge. And I think that this is such an interesting dynamic character that has a long history, and exploring a new kind of maybe softer side um, in in something that would would introduce younger readers, like very younger readers, um, to this iconic character in a new way is a challenge and it's exciting. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be on the project. Amazing. Kiki is a fantastic storyteller and I cannot wait to see what she does with this. Um, in My Name is Doug, every page when you turn it has a surprise. There's that moment of anticipation and excitement. And it's just so thrilling. And you know, with Nitty's work, she does such beautiful work on humans and children, but also her nature and her color palette, I think is just gonna add so much to this project. Who is your favorite monster in the MonsterVerse? You know, I mean, we love Kong, but besides Kong, if you had to pick one, who would it be? Kiki? Well, so Kong's definitely my favorite. <laughs> but um, I got to say, I love the spore mantis. I just love this idea of a stick bug that's the size of a redwood. Every time I, you know, see it or think about it, I think it's so clever and cool. So that's my favorite monster. <laughs> awesome. I would have to say Kong is favorite and then Godzilla comes close second. You know, I think it, you know, they're, they're seen so often together and they're such different, at least, at least when I think about it, I think about um, form and shape and they're such different figures um, and their anatomy is so different. When I think about drawing them, uh, again, it's like that kind of interesting um, uh, structure. And so I find them very, very fascinating. So we'll yeah. See. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Like I said, this is a real short one and we are so looking forward to seeing more coming from you in the future. And uh, yeah, we'll keep everybody posted on the details. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
And that concludes the Legendary Comics portion of today's panel. Please check out our other MonsterVerse titles, Skull Island, The Birth of Kong, Godzilla Awakening, and Godzilla Aftershock. All of these titles are available at your local comic book store, bookstore, or online at comicsology.com. Joining us now are our amazing partners at Inside Editions. Executive Editor Chris Prince and writer Dan Wallace will take you through the exciting new book, The Art of Godzilla vs. Kong. Hi there, I'm Chris Prince. I'm Executive Editor at Insight Editions. Uh, Insight's a publishing company that specializes in beautiful deluxe books based on um, amazing pop culture properties, everything from Star Wars to Harry Potter to Game of Thrones. Um, so we're currently working on The Art of Godzilla vs. Kong, an amazing art book about the upcoming movie. Uh, it's going to feature lots of uh, incredible art, as you would expect, plus the full story of the creation of the film, with lots of interviews with the, uh, the heads of the department and the director, the cast, everybody you could possibly imagine. Uh, the book's been written by Daniel Wallace, who's with me now. Uh, Dan has written a lot of books for Insight over the years. Um, we've done books together on Man of Steel, um, Warcraft, Pacific Rim Uprising, all great legendary entertainment properties. And uh, yeah, Dan was the perfect choice to do this book. And um, yeah, Dan, why don't you just tell us a little bit about how you got into writing these kind of books? That's a really good question. The, uh, the short answer is it was sort of in my DNA. I feel like I sort of grew up loving these types of movies. And um, like a lot of people, I think the people that, that enjoy this entertainment and buy this have the same backgrounds. But um, the first books that I wrote uh, were in the Star Wars universe. I wrote books like The Jedi Path. Uh, and then I did DC uh, books like the DC Encyclopedia and the Marvel, the Iron Man Manual and uh, the World According to Spider-Man. And and these things that I love, and I've been lucky enough to work in all these other genres that I love, like Ghostbusters and Pacific Rim and so on. And when this came about, it's like, this is, of course, this is the culmination of that. You know, of course, I like Godzilla. Of course, I love King Kong. This is, um, how could you grow up in this this stew of genre entertainment and not love these kaiju these characters it's it's such a privilege to be working on this tell us a little about uh, the process of putting the book together and working with the heads of department on the movie and people like the director adam wingard when when you're writing a behind the scenes book the advantage is you're able to talk to the people you know as a movie goer you you see a movie and you're your real connection with it is the the actors, right? But the people who are really responsible for making a movie are the director, uh, the cinematographer, the writers, uh, and then the people who help produce things, who build things, the art directors, the production designers, the set builders. Um, these are the people who actually bring it to life and have, is, you know, especially the director and the writers have a real insight into what the characters are all about and what the conflicts mean, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And um, for this book, we did all of that. <laughs> we, we interviewed basically everybody who was behind the scenes um, who helped put this together. Um, the director, Adam Wingard, was, the, was critical to putting this together, but... Um, it's a making of book, but it's also an art book. So we're talking to the art directors, we're talking to the production designers, we're talking to the people who build sets, uh, and we're getting photos of all of those things. And uh, uh, the visual effects people, like digitally, um, yeah. how do these things come together? And, uh, and that's, all, that's all in here. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for all your insight there. <laughs> Cheers. Um, all right, take care. Thank you. I just want to say that you can pre-order the book now on Amazon.com. It's called The Art of Godzilla vs. Kong by Daniel Wallace. And please uh, follow us on Twitter at, at Insight Editions to get all the latest updates on the book. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you again for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our panel and we look forward to sharing more information in the future. Be sure to check out our social channels for updates.